Hello, YouTubers and all those happen to watch. Hope you're doing quite well. So, this month is usually a 31 Ghoulish Games kind of month. But because of the fact that I do them every single year, and usually I got a good turnout for it, and because of the fact I know a lot of the old crowd that used to come back and watch this every year kind of disappeared and they just simply moved on, I decided to do something more simpler for a format and keep it straightforward for this video. So here are 10 games I recommend to check out for the month of October, starting with number one. Coming in at number one, Vigil, The Longest Night. It is a Lovecraftian style Metroidvania. You've probably seen a couple of these already in the wild, but this one is actually pretty cool. Besides some of the little bit of jankiness here and there, it's honestly a fantastic game. And they put so much work into the game that it honestly, little blemishes here and there are not so bad. And if anything, a lot of the collectibles that you can find throughout the world is awesome. You can get axes, swords, etc., etc., bows, arrows, find all kinds of cool outfits to put on, which give you some new stats. And the monsters are absolutely horrifying looking, which is amazing. So if you want a new Metroidvania to play, look no further than Vigil. Coming in at number two is Dark Arms Beast Buster 1999. This one is a very unique title for the Neo Geo Pocket Color, and it actually is, shameless plug here on behalf of SNK, but I couldn't help myself, the Neo Geo Pocket Color Selection Volume 1 Steam Edition, as well as the Switch Edition if you so choose to pick it up on either platform. It's an awesome game. I have it physically on my actual Neo Geo Pocket Color, and it's actually one of my personal favorite games of the system. It has a unique save system on the Switch slash the Steam version as well, so you can kind of close out the game, come back to it, and it's you can play and get to your progress there. But what makes this game so cool and unique is the fact that you kill enemies and power up weapons that way in sort of a unique RPG style system. And it has this entire Halloween theme screaming about it the whole entire time. And you play it in overhead style, kind of like the Blast Master elements where you're going inside those dungeons and you're overhead and all that. It's kind of like that if you want an example, uh, that kind of gameplay. You shoot monsters, you destroy them, you power up your weapons, you get make stronger pistols and etc, 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 different kinds of weapons along the way. Cool monsters to look at. It's just ridiculous fun. Awesome game. Check out Dark Arms Beast Buster 1999. Coming in at number three is one of the games I play every single year. That is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It is one of my all-time favorite games on the PlayStation 1. It offers so much in terms of just dazzling music, fantastic gameplay, just such huge replayability because simply it's so damn fun. And I can go on and on about this game, how it has so many secrets, all kinds of power-ups you can collect. It simply is the standard, I feel, when it comes to the true definition of Metroidvania. Henceforth, the Metroid slash the Vania part, which of course this game taps that in quite firmly. Symphony of the Night, again, has so much playability because of all the collectibles you can get throughout the environments. But I can go on and on about this all day, but you probably already know about this game. If you haven't checked it out yet... Be sure to check it out in the Xbox store or wherever else provided. But again, a all-time classic. Check out Castlevania Symphony of the Night at number three. And number four, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. It basically is the events after the 88 film, <laughs> the same title, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. After the death of the Uncle Vincent, Elvira basically is inherited Castle Kilbragant. I can never say it correctly. People are going to correct me in the comments probably. And so basically she inherits a castle. She tries to prep it to be some sort of uh, horror attraction. But of course this backfires on us. All kinds of nasties come alive. And then you have to rescue her as the player. There's never a name definitively given to your character other than just the player. So you just can fill in the blank there whoever the hell you want to name yourself. So you basically have to stop the this evil witch from coming back to life. It's a summary of the entire game right there. And doing so, you go through this crazy, horrifying, spooky, and awesome all-around adventure slash RPG game where you're going around trying to solve little bits and pieces to it. And of course, this game, along with the sequel, The Jaws of Cerberus, were actually two games before the other cult favorite of the Waxworks game. You might recognize that somewhere in GOG. Now, these two games were before that, but of course, it is this insane 
you know, how this game managed to inspire Waxworks, which again, obviously was based off of fill in the blank here. So it's so cool to see this style of game, and it's not been done too well or seen too often since, actually, when it comes to this style of adventure game. Now, your consequences, of course, come along with your simply dying or whatever else. And it's so cool, though, when they basically award you when you do something right in this game, because the game itself is not easy at all. It just isn't. It's a challenging game, but a really fun one, too. So be sure to check out Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Number five, Elvira 2, The Jaws of Cerberus, is basically the sequel to Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, if you haven't guessed so already. Now, it's made by the same publisher, Horrorsoft, and published by Accolade as well. It's a sequel to the 1990 game, and you play this time as Elvira's boyfriend, which you got rewarded from the first game, I guess. Wink, wink. And so, therefore, now you got to rescue her from the demon Cerberus once you use her magical powers for his own demise, or in this case, his own means. So you pretty much go into a horror movie studio where you have to go and try to rescue her from props and things that come to life and some evil supernatural thing. Either way, long story short, this game has a big upgrade from the first game in terms of graphics. A lot of the interface is a lot more cooler to look at. There's a little bit of quality of life mixed in there as well. And it overall is a lot more pleasing to play. But the first game is still excellent to play as well if you can get past the challenge. Like this one as well, which is also pretty damn challenging. But with the challenge comes great reward because the game feels rewarding whenever you run through it. Now, I can say so much about this game, but I'll simply leave it to check it out for yourself. It is an excellent, excellent game. Number six is Grim Dawn. Now, Grim Dawn obviously has its own accolades of being one of the more supremely awesome Diablo-like games or dungeon crawling-like games where you just slash and loot, so to speak. It has more of a Lovecraftian-isk vibe to it, but at the same time, it just has like that medieval time kind of steampunk vibe to it that just simply carries through perfectly as far as I'm concerned. The combat and everything else related to it is excellent, excellent, excellent. I cannot really specify that enough without doing a chef's kiss in the air. It's a game that simply always satisfies. There's all kinds of different things you can do in the game, such as trading out um, certain powers and abilities per playthrough, so you can mix and match how you see fit and create the ultimate killing machine if you so choose. The power-ups and the loot is plentiful. The enemies are pretty dastardly and can really get at you, so that's always a plus, I'd say. So without further ado, definitely check out Grim Dawn. Number seven is Pumpkin Jack, which honestly is one of the really good spiritual successors to Medieval. And one of the few, really, because no one else has really tried to take this idea and run with it quite like this game. Now, it feels like its own original game if you've never played a Medieval before in its, your lifetime, but at the same time, it pretty much takes the, the vibe, the love, the passion that you remember from the original Medieval game if you ever played it, and pretty much carries through with it. There's all kinds of different mechanical things you can do with it. It just feels just like Medieval. You haven't checked it out already? I'm not going to say no more. Grab it and play it. The hell are you waiting for? Number eight, if you're a fan of old school horror films and tropes of the related nature, look no further than Blood Fresh Supply, which parodies and, of course, carries through with a lot of the references from all kinds of pop culture references of those said horror films, such as Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, the list goes on. It is practically in this said game. And it's up to you to simply look up and find every single one you can find in the list that I could probably mention top of my head, like The Shining. And I can keep going, but I don't want to because it's going to ruin it for you. This game, of course, plays with the build engine, which is, of course, Duke Nukem 3D. So if you want a reference of how it plays, but with the fresh supply, it uses full modern controls perfectly. So you can use AWSD and I believe controller supports also in there as well. Don't hold me to that because I can't remember the top of my head. But anywho, if you love a solid, solid FPS 
look no further than blood for a supply. The reason why I'm referencing this particular version of the game is simply because it's the most easy entry friendly version to the game for newer players on modern control scheme wise. Otherwise, hey, what do I know? Play the old one if you want to. Number nine is Dusk. Now this game looks and handles a lot like, well, the first Quake game, but with more fluid controls and kind of lightly tips its hat to the blood game in particular, but at the same time it's its own game. It has a lot of different community input into the game as well, different kinds of little bits and pieces inserted into it, but otherwise it is really, really fun in terms of a Twitch shooter. Now a lot of people don't like that term with this particular kind of game, but it really is such a thing as a Twitch shooter. A lot of frantic combat, a lot of crazy stuff happens, and a lot of rocket jumping. And I do it, mean it with emphasis, rocket jumping galore. Fantastic game with a lot of secrets you can find, as well as simply just feeling accomplishing to take out a horde of enemies at once. Love with every single bullet, I tell you. And finally on this list, which none of the games have a particular quality order other than just simply just being on a list, Prey 2016. I have to emphasize that because people think I'm talking about the old one, but no, Prey 2016 is simply one of the more unique titles of today's generation. It kind of blends in that element of being kind of like the thing, but not being like the thing, but yeah, sci-fi based. It's There's so many different elements and people go, well, this isn't truly horror. It is, but it isn't. It is, but it isn't. It kind of has that whole System Shock vibe to it at the same time. It's like, you know what I mean? It's, it's not you know, having Shodan doing stuff to you at all, but instead is so much layers in this game in terms of a story that once you play it, you're like, wait, and this is really good. The story in it definitely carries you through as well, and a lot of the secrets and the ways you can complete the game is totally that, that System Shock vibe to it more than anything else. So definitely check out Prey 2016. You can play it how you wish. It just It's a great, great game. Do not sleep on it. But that concludes my list for the 10 ghoulish games for 2021. Hopefully these games, or any one of them, piqued your interest. You were able to play them simply just by, if you already have them in your list, never played them before, or whatever else. If this list helped you out in any which way, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel. Click the bell, because apparently that's a thing and I never knew. Really? I, I mean, I don't watch videos long enough to hear people say click bells. I, I really don't. But... If you followed this video all the way through, thank you so much and take care. Whee!